Hey, Crazy Will here today. Today we're gonna be talking about how to make a smart garage door opener for seven dollars. That's right, seven bucks. I'm gonna show you how. Stay tuned. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna make a smart garage door opener for seven bucks, guys. You're probably wondering, Will, how can you do that for seven dollars? Real simple, guys. Sign off, smart switch. Now, I know what you're thinking. You can't just hook these up to anything. It's an electrical relay. We're gonna turn it into just a relay in this episode. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So basically what we're gonna do is instead of making electric come out of one end, we're just gonna make it complete the circuit. Now, these are also voice activated. It says it right on the box, guys. You can use Google Assistant. You could use Amazon Alexa. So you can program these little switches to work with your voice. You just gotta name them. Now, if you're not familiar with the Sonoff devices, I have a video you guys can watch right here. It'll show you all about it. I show you how to wire it up. I show you how to set it up. I show Show you everything. So this is going to be a continuation of that last video. So you might want to check that video out first, get familiar with them, and then do this project. So let's get started, shall we? Let's go over to the workbench and figure out how to make this thing. Okay, so here's the sawn off switch. Real easy guys, you take the screws out of here, you pull this off, put these off to the side, and then what you would do is take a small screwdriver and push in. There's clips either side here. You pull them out and then this should come off nice and easy off to the side and then this is the board so this is what we're going to be looking at and uh, for lack of a better word I guess I'm going to call it a relay is what we're trying to build for the garage door opener and what we're going to be doing is if you see where this I think it's a diode you see where this diode is right here if you flip it over that's what we're looking for you see there's a big chunk there of solder what we're going to do, be doing here is we are going to slice it right there. We're going to cut this piece of solder, this lead, and we're going to be cutting into this lead. And once we cut into that, we'll have a gap there and it will stop the electricity from coming to these leads. Because we're pretty much what we're trying to do is just close the circuit right here. And what we're going to do is at the end, we're going to add a piece of solder from here to here and there'll be a cut here. So we will still be getting a lead to close the circuit. Now, we still need electricity to come in on this side to power up all the Wi-Fi capability in this board. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. And all right, as you can see, I took a little uh, metal saw and I cut out right there. Now you can see the cut. Let me show you on the other side. It's right along that right there. And it cut the two leads right off. So we don't have connection with them anymore is what we really wanted. All right, so the next step is to solder. And if you guys are a little afraid of soldering, you should be, it's not that hard. We're gonna put a piece of metal from there to there. And I'm gonna solder this. And there you go, right there we have a bridge. Right across there, that's connecting this lead to this device over to this lead. So we got a nice lead going across now, going from here to the lead of this device right here. So that should be it for us as far as soldering. Okay, so I have an old Apple power cord for Apple TV. So I'm going to use this, I'm going to cut this end off and I'm going to use that for my power supply on this switch. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is put this thing back together. And we'll put it right in there and make sure the button lines up. I'm going to put this like so. Boom! So on off is back together. No screws or anything, you just put it back in. And now we're going to complete the process of putting in the neutral wire, which is going to be white, and the load wire, which is going to be black. Put these into their respective places. All right, looks like they're in correctly. Let's tap them down, shall we? Let's throw this back on just so it doesn't come out and... Nice and tight, won't come out. Plug it up, make sure it works. Alright, so just to prove that it works, I'm almost positive that was going to work, I just wanted to double check it. Okay, so we have power going in, which is powering everything in the sawn off right there. And now we have a light, and it's 
Yeah, I know it looks a little complex. It's not really. It's just a breadboard. I have one lead going into the neutral side and another lead going to the positive. So this is the negative and that's the positive. And I got a breadboard working on that. Basically, it's just to show that this is actually working as a relay. So if we hit the button, it turns on the light. And that's what we're trying to accomplish to open up the garage door. We're just continuing the flow. The next step is we're going to go to the phone and put a, a quick switch so it just does one of these. So that way it just gives a signal. So that's the next step we're going to do. This is just proof of concept that it does work. It is acting as a relay and that's what I wanted. All right, so we're gonna click into the app. It's the EWE Link. At least I think that's how you say it. It's a weird name. But anyway, let's go into that. And if you recall in my old video, I called it Test Light when I was first testing these out and trying them out and seeing what they did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click not on off because you can click the on, the off. And if you don't have this app, you have to make a username and password. I, I did describe that in an earlier video. So make sure you take a look at that video. It shows you how to set it up. You make a username and password and then you link these. This is already linked. So what I'm gonna do is you click off to the side of that device, which the firmware has to be updated, which we could do that. Update that firmware real quick. That's an important thing because we're playing. I'm going to stop the video why that updates. I just wanted you to see that. I didn't want to leave it out of my video because I think it's important for you to know how to do that. So I'm going to stop the video and we'll come back. Okay, so it's been updated. Let's go back to where we started. I just wanted to show you that because I think it's an important thing. We're going to click not on the on off, but we're going to actually click on where it says actual test light. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in there and it brings you into this menu. And if you look up at the right hand corner, you'll see three dots in a circle. We're to click on that and it has a drop down menu where it says settings we're gonna to go to settings and the first thing I want to do is I want to I want to change the name of this because we want to make it this will work with Alexa so I want to make it work with it so we're gonna call it garage door hold on let's go in there all right so we're gonna call it that now it's garage door we have the firmware updated the next thing that's really important is we don't want this to stay on and like i said i don't know if this is going to work yet but we're going to go through the video and see and if you're seeing this video it did work obviously we're going to change it's called inching when you hit the button it stays on we don't want it to stay on we want it to turn on and turn off because it's just making a connection saying hey boom do this it's just giving a quick command so what we're going to do is enter in and we're going to turn that on so when we turn that on, duration's 0.5. All right, so I think that's I think that's gonna work. We'll leave it at 0.5. All right, okay, so we have that. So now, that's all done. Let's go back. We're gonna hit the arrow up there. It's off right now. When we turn it on, it should turn right off. And that's what we want to do because it's just sending a signal to the garage door. See? Turns on, turns off, and that's what we want. They recently add this in. It's just a quicker, easier way than going through all this technical crap just to do basically this. Ooh, okay, so we're gonna try and make this video as quick as possible because we're out in my freezing cold garage. What I have behind me is the garage door opener. And if you look up here, there's two wires coming down. Okay, so I already have a smart garage door opener. I actually use the MyQ, which you can see my video here about it. It's a Chamberlain MyQ garage door opener. But this is actually going to be for my father. He has a garage door opener and the remote stopped working and only the switch works. So that's why I'm playing with the switch. And you can also wire this up on the device just in case you don't want to play with your switch. I'm doing it from the switch because this is the easiest, fastest way and I'm cold and I don't want to be in here. In my case, you just lift it up and it gives you access to the screw. There's two screws right on the back here. I'm gonna undo them and release the wires. So in essence, if we put these two wires together, it should open the garage door. So that's not working. So it looks like there is a fail safe system because this is a smart garage door opener that you can't just tap the wires together and open up the garage door like regular garage doors. And I did a lot of research guys. Most garage door openers, you just tap the two wires together and it opens. So the relay would work. But unfortunately, being that this is a smart garage door opener, maybe it's a safety feature. I don't know, I haven't gotten a chance to look it up, but all the other paperwork that I see, everything that I looked up online, 
says that should work. I even have a brother that is in New York, Tom, which I mention quite often. He put the two wires together, he took his whole thing apart, and he has LiftMaster, and tapped the two wires together, and it worked. So, I don't know what's really going on here, but it's not working for me. So now, it's time for plan B. If this doesn't work for you, this is another way around it. Okay, so this is what I came up with. This is actually the garage door opener, just to give you a better understanding. This is the way it normally looks. I took it apart, like so. There's a battery there. Gotta make sure you have that in there. And this is the main button that we use to open and close the garage door. So what I did was I flipped it over. These are the four ends right here that make the button. Those are the solder joints. When I took this little piece of wire and I tapped each lead end to it, like from here to the other side, it opened the garage door. So I then soldered two wires onto there and then attached it to our relay and that fixed the problem. So we're gonna plug it up and I'm gonna flip it over so you can see. All right, so now it's on. Now all I have to do is we could either hit this button, it powers on and it turns on and off the garage. If one hit will close it, another hit will stop it, another hit will open it. Basically it's one function just like you would use your regular garage door opener button. The cool thing about this is now we can link it to Alexa. So I could say we named it weird so uh, it's garage door so what we could say is Alexa turn on garage door. Okay. And if you can hear it in the background, I don't know if you can, it's turning it on and turning it off. Unfortunately, you have to constantly say turn on and it'll turn it on. There's no open. I'm sure there's a way you could do that, but for experiment purposes, this shows you what it does. So this is what we're left with after everything's said and done. It's a regular garage door opener, soldered to the leads of the open and close button, hooked to a Sonoff. Basically, if you have a fan, or if you have anything that's remote controlled, you could technically do this. So this isn't all bad, this is good, this is another way of doing things to make it smart. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this up, and we're gonna get this thing working. Okay, moment of truth, guys. I set it up with you know who, and I'm gonna say, Alexa, turn on the garage door. Okay. All right. And it still worked with the sensors. It's not the most ideal way to say something, like, you know, to say turn on. It's a little annoying, but it works. You could ultimately do this with anything. And we could rename it to open garage door. You could say turn on open garage door, but it works. That's the whole thing. Now, the only downside of this is there's no detection, not unless you're using some kind of smart home monitoring system that you could link with this. This is just a simple everyday guy kind of use. So now if I say, Alexa, turn on the garage door. Okay. There we go. Now the garage door is closing. Alexa, turn on the garage door. Okay. So, pretty cool. So I think it's pretty cool how it worked out. I'm liking it, I think it's pretty neat. I think I'm gonna help some friends with this. I hope this helped you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And remember, you could do anything, and I mean anything, if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. I figures it wouldn't work right on the wall. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there. <laughs>